Hello everyone, my name is Claudia Correa and today I am here with Superb Speaking, a session dedicated to um, speaking activities that will get your students talking, um, getting them engaged in conversations, part of the What's Up 7 project. Um, you can use these activities, we're going to go through each unit one by one and see how we can explore different speaking activities. So the first activity that I have for you is Guess Who I Am. Unit one is um, dedicated to the grammar aspects, verb to be, the present simple, verb to have got, present simple, among other things, and giving personal details. So the activity here of guess who I am is um, an activity in which students are going to have to guess who is the famous person. So what you need for this is a self stick pad and a pen for each student. You're going to get them into groups of four. Each student on the self stick pad will write a name of a famous character. It can be a famous singer, a celebrity, um, an actor, actress. Just make sure it's someone that is well known among all the students. Once this is done, the student with his self stick pad will glue it on the forehead of the student immediately on the left so that they don't know uh, the name that they have. Uh, stuck on their forehead. And the idea is that they ask yes or no questions um, to guess who uh, their famous person is. They would ask something like, um, am I an actor? Um, do I star in movies? Um, am I a Portuguese celebrity, for instance? Okay, so this will get them um, talking, asking and answering questions about each other until they guess who their famous person is. If alternatively you don't want students having to stick these um, self stick pads on their forehead and many times they do fall, you can also get a clothes peg and then um, you can attach it to the back collar of that student's uh, shirt for instance and that way they'll just turn around, their colleagues can see who they are and answer these questions as well. On to the next activity show and tell. I'm pretty sure you've heard of this activity already. Show and tell is quite popular among the younger students, not so much teenagers. However, that can change. In unit 1.3, the focus is um, families, in terms of vocabulary, it's families. So what you would do here um, is you would have a show and tell related to uh, families. In what way? Well, students would bring in a picture or a drawing, anything about family. And you can even set aside these topics, okay? Like the favorite family pet, a picture of a fam favorite family member, or fa favorite family activity on a Saturday morning, for instance. So they bring in a picture or they even draw it, and then they have one minute to talk about it in front of their class. So while this may seem um, quite basic, it's actually very uh, motivating for students because talking about something that is familiar to them actually builds their confidence in them, uh, the speaking part. So they've kind of forgotten that they were afraid to speak to begin with. And for, uh, for lower level students, I guess, or for students who aren't as confident, you can allow them to maybe have their notes behind the picture and then use them when they're talking about it. I mean, it's something that's very close to them and I'm sure they'll enjoy talking about their family and other students find out more information about their peers' uh, family members as well. Moving on to the hot seat. Now, the hot seat is something that you may have heard of um, in other presentations. I'm not sure if it's the same version as mine, but I'll explain. So the idea with the hot seat is that you get one chair and you place it at the front of the class. Then you get a student, a volunteer student, to sit on the hot seat. You are going to then have a word projected or written behind the student who is sitting on the hot seat. Now, let's say we're working with unit 2.1. This unit is about school facilities and school objects. So you would write a word um, on the board behind the student on the hot seat. Let's say, for instance, pencil case. Okay, so then the student on the hot seat would randomly choose uh, one of his classmates, point to them or say their name, and that student would have to provide them a clue of the object that's written on the board. So that student might say something like, um, it's not very big. Okay, but that can be a million things. So then he would have to point to another student to give him another clue. 
You can find this in your school bag. Okay, there's so many things you can find in the school bag. Not quite there yet. Maybe point to a different student. Um, this contains colored pencils, pens, and pencils in it. Okay, so maybe now I have an idea. So the student on the hot seat must then say the word that he thinks is written on the board. In this case, would be pencil case. So he would have to say that word and uh, get it right um, in as many or as less <laughs> tries as possible. So if he's able to get the word right with about two clues, that's great. If he has to go on about four or five or six clues, maybe there wasn't a very, there wasn't a very good job at explaining and giving the clues to begin with. But the idea is that students interact. And again, um, it takes away from the pressure of having to uh, speak because the students who are sitting, um, even at, even if they are not as confident in speaking, they will want to try and help their colleague to um, guess uh, the object that's on the board. And so they will try as much as possible to speak and use the vocabulary they know to describe the object for them. Okay, let's move along to another activity. This one's called Now I Know. In Unit 2.3, there's a section um, in which a classmate, or you'll find a story in this case, an interview, in which they are interviewing someone extraordinary. Okay, so there's questions going back and forth, and there's an interview uh, about somebody's life. Okay, in this case, Amazing Kids Unit, and there's a school re a reporter um, getting some information in an interview for a magazine. So this is something very uh, similar because you're going to have students working in pairs, and one of them is going to act as an investigative journalist. Okay, and so what do investigative journalists do? They also ask questions and then they represent the, they present the findings at the end of uh, what they found. So they're going to ask their classmate, maybe their partner, um, six questions. Okay, by, by this point of the book, they will already have explored the present simple and present continuous. So they can ask six different questions. And then at the end of those six questions, they will present the findings to their classmates and they will start with a sentence, now I know. For instance, now I know Antonio enjoys horse riding at the weekends with his cousin. His favorite meal is lasagna and he doesn't really enjoy um, he doesn't really enjoy playing volleyball, let's say, okay? So this is a great activity also for students to get to know each other. It can be a great activity for the beginning of the school year, why not? An icebreaker for students to get to know each other. So again, pair them up, get them asking each other some questions, and then present the findings about who they know and have the students start with now I know and present um, information about the person they've just spoken to. Moving along to it's your turn. This activity is great because it's going to take a load off of you, the teacher. In it's your turn, the student uh, will have an opportunity to teach the class. So let's say we're at unit 3.1. And the topic is prepositions of place. You've covered this, you've gone over some exercises, um, drilled it, etc. You're going to have two students, you're going to put them in pairs, and in pairs they will have maybe a couple of days to then revise and present this again in the next lesson, or you can even do it a lesson before the test, tune as a revision. So the idea is that they come to the class prepared. Uh, with a simple presentation, it can be with a poster, PowerPoint, they can even draw on the board. And the idea is that this pair together presents the topic that you assign them. So if you assign them prepositions of place, they will then present to the class this theme of prepositions of place, and you will act as a student. And as a student, you can ask um, some questions to make sure that um, uh, what they're saying is correct. Check for students, other students' understanding, in fact, to see if everyone understood, um, and just um, have them take the role of the teacher uh, in this case. They will enjoy it very much, <laughs> and I'm sure they'll have fun with it. And also, um, the topic that they normally present is something that sticks. So they'll um, also be more confident when it comes to the test because they'll know this very well 
since they've presented it and taught it to their peers. Then we have bamboozle. I've already talked about bamboozle in previous presentations. If you attended the Great Grammars, Great Grammar Games presentation, um, I introduced you or gave you a better understanding of what bamboozle is. So this is a website. And if you go to bamboozle.com, it's a website with interactive um, templates that are created. There are thousands that have been created already by teachers, and you can create your own template. And um, it allows you to have up to four different teams, and you can it, it can range anywhere from um, gap filling exercises. Um, you can put pictures and students guess pictures. Um, it, it's it's a very um, it has a variety of options, let's say. So you can have up to four teams, one to four teams, and there are different numbered squares. And then when you click on one of those squares, you will have normally either a question to answer or um, some type of challenge that you must, um, you must take on. And in other squares, you'll lose points, win points, and that's the fun part of the game. That's where the students really find it fun because you never know when you're gonna find a pot of gold that will award you points, or you'll find another symbol that'll take away points. You can swap points, you can steal points. That's the fun part of it. And that's why you can use it for unit 3.2, for instance. Say you're talking about houses and types of houses. Um, you can create your own template. You can even have, for instance, in one of the squares, a picture of, let's say, a boathouse. And the question can be, would you live here and why? Okay, so opposed to just asking them, so would you ever live in a boathouse? Or tell me about your favorite part of the house. You can have, you can provide these little squares with the questions for you um, so that it gets them more um, engaged into, into the speaking activity. So you can have, again, a boathouse and ask them if they've ever lived there. You can have different types of houses, why not? And ask them, what do you see in the picture? Oh, it's terrace houses, it's a block of flats. Um, you can even just have questions instead of pictures. Um, describe your bedroom, for instance. And again, it's a different way to get them speaking as opposed to just simply asking them which many times students actually find boring. So as you put a template in front of them uh, with points, win points, lose points, they'll always find it, um, as, as competitive as they are, they'll always find it a little bit more fun. Moving along to another uh, activity, it's called Getting Around, and that's uh, exactly what we're going to do with this activity, as the name suggests. In Unit 4.1, um, you know, 4.1 really focuses on uh, getting around town, uh, going around the city. Um, and with this activity, you will go to um, teachthis.com um, to get the worksheets in necessary to do this activity. So again, we're focusing on functional language here. Asking for and giving directions is something that is always in useful when you travel to any um, city. So at teachthis.com, you'll find um, getting around information gap activity. They give you worksheets already prepared for this. And basically they're going to practice asking for and giving directions um, with a train system map or a subway system map, as you can see here, okay? So you're going to have students work in pairs, student A and student B, and you're going to give each one the corresponding worksheet. Then they will take it in turns to ask um, each other questions and to actually give directions to a specific um, train station. For instance, as you can see, you are at Forest and you want to get to Central. So the student would have to describe how they would get there using the different train stations. The other student must listen, follow, and then in those little spaces, they must write down the correct train station. At the end, they will then compare their answers, compare their maps, and see if they got it um, right, okay? Just also to tell you that at teachers.com, you'll find these worksheets, and you'll also find some prompt phrases on the worksheet that will help students to then ask for and give directions. Okay, so it also comes with a set of phrases, useful phrases that student can use to do this activity. Now boarding, not the train, but the plane. 
Unit 4.2 um, is about places to see in a city and London uh, landmarks. Okay, as you can see here. Now, again, at teachthis.com, uh, we saw the worksheets that could be used for getting around um, train stations, subway stations. And here we have boarding passes. So now we're, we've gone to plane. So the idea here is, again, you're going to have student A and B. You're going to have them pairs. And you're going to provide them with the worksheets uh, you can find at this website. And the worksheets, basically what they have is um, they have two boarding passes. Both of them are incomplete. Well, student A will have his information complete, but not student B. So the idea is that they ask and answer questions to, to fill out the boarding pass. Okay, so they've just met at the airport, and they're talking before their flight, and they're going to ask questions um, such as, where are you flying to? What time is boarding? What's your gate number, etc. Okay, and to help them with these questions again, uh, the worksheet previously provides you with um, these question words and sentences for them to do prior to this uh, main speaking activity, okay? Or if you want, you as a teacher can also practice the type of questions they will need. And once that's done, okay, get them speaking in pairs to find out the information that's missing on in, in their boarding passes, okay? Don't forget spelling because spelling is equally important here. Now it's time to dream big as we move on to the last unit of our What's Up 7 book. So unit 5.1, as you can see, a very active uh, unit in which um, the focus is future tenses, the future tense, and uh, future aspirations that are also mentioned. So here I think a good idea could be to create vision boards or dream boards. Um, kind of what you see here in the picture. So like a vision board is, is a board, it's like a collage of different photos, different pictures, different phrases or quotes even, I would say, in which you um, glue uh, sets of photos of, of your future, of your, what you aspire, your dreams, in terms of career, in terms of your personal life, in terms of traveling, etc. Now, Obviously, I know that a seventh grade student might not really know what they would be doing in 15 years time, but they might have an idea of uh, what, where they want to be or what they want to be in the future. Okay, so as we can see here, we have the students drawing with two, two, 2019 goals. Okay, uh, not the greatest artist, but we get the message. And that's exactly what's entailed here is that students get creative. You know, why not pair this up maybe with the art teacher? and get students to create a poster, a collage of different photos, um, or they can even draw if they have the drawing skills, and they will, maybe four or five things um, they'll present on their poster of what they want in the future, what they want for their future, whether it be related to sports, for instance, or to school, um, family, career, okay? And then they will present it to the class, okay? They'll give maybe a one to two minute presentation, of their vision board to the class. Again, for students who are not as confident speaking, allow them to read the notes maybe that are behind the poster. Um, and um, it, again, it's, it's something like the um, family activity that we saw before, the show and tell. Something that's familiar to them is always helpful in building their confidence towards, uh, towards speaking English because it's something they're familiar with. It's something uh, they really want to share with the class. They enjoy sharing with the class, okay? And if you have some free space on the walls in the classroom, why not then hang up these vision boards and these or dream, dream boards as a constant reminder of um, where they want to be, where they want to go, and how successful um, they can be uh, to achieve their dreams. And finally, the last activity here, as our superb speaking activities are coming to an end, is the bowl toss. The last unit's focus is on uh, summer activities and summer holidays. And of course, students are always looking forward to that. And we, as teachers, want to know what their summer is going to be about. So instead of, again, just asking the questions of, so what are you doing this summer? Where are you going? Who are you going with? Let's do this in a more creative way, fun way. So what you would do is you would get a beach ball, you would blow it up, 
and write some questions with a marker, okay? I suggest also uh, numbering the questions as you go along and why. Because the idea is that you then toss the ball to a student and say a number. He's going to look for that number on the ball and then he's going to answer the question. So again, it's something similar to bamboozle. Instead of just asking the question, why not provide it in a fun way for the student to answer? So you toss the ball, say a number, students read the number, uh, the question that is um, associated to that number. So what do you normally take with you to the beach? Student would answer, okay, very well. They would toss the ball to someone else and they would say a number and then so on and so on, talking about the summer holidays in a fun way, okay? So um, again, a different activity that can be explored within the classroom, apart from just simply asking the question, you would get students active, let's say before the summer holidays. So that's all the time we have for today. I hope you found these 10 activities useful. I hope you use them in your classroom. I would love to get your feedback on that. And tune in for some more sessions um, on these, these webinars that are useful, uh, provide you with activities. I'm always looking forward to sharing my ideas with you. If you have any ideas to share with me, please feel free to do so. Here is my email address, okay? And thank you for listening to today's What's Up 7 um, suggestion on speaking activities. Thank you. Goodbye.